Welcome back to week four of our identity series, No Filter, The True You. Um, this week we are talking about relationships and the idea centered around the relationships is that um, to be somebody, you have to be with somebody. And we wanna talk about why that is not, um, why that's not a thing, why that's not accurate. It's true, and uh, Ryan and I thought about doing a few songs maybe to kick this one off. There's a lot of relationship songs. No. Nope. But we opted not to. <laughs> and nope. uh, my name is Paul, one of the pastors as well, and it does remind me of a Jerry Maguire, the movie Jerry Maguire quote, where he says, you complete me. Oh. And it's it's uh, it's like this really dramatic moment, and, and I mean, sometimes it can just feel really good and really right. It's actually a really unhealthy quote. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I think about this idea of uh, romantic relationships or having a girlfriend or a boyfriend or being married, um, all these thoughts just come to mind. And there are actually a lot of misconceptions about relationships. And, and I'm going to list a couple right now. And, and we just kind of want to talk, talk through them just really briefly. But uh, the first one is if you're not with somebody, you're weird. Right. Like, yeah. it, you know, like you, you're, you're not, it's not normal to, to not have a boyfriend or be married, yeah. that kind of thing. And, and I just like, where did that come from? Do you think I, it's, it's too bad. I, you know, I don't know exactly where it came from, but man, there's uh, we are always looking for affirmation. We always want someone to be with. I remember when Kristen and I um, were engaged and we were looking forward to getting married. I remember us sharing like one of the things that we're really excited for about being married and everything is you'll always have a date to the weddings that you're invited to now <laughs> because like it'd be awkward you know like oh i'm going to my friend's wedding and i'm going to go with so and so and um uh but it does there is there's something and i think it might have started as something very natural but i think can there's a there's a big gray line there where it can become really unhealthy too. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Uh, the second misconception um, that I've observed is that um, people think that if you're not with somebody, you're incomplete, and so that's why I think we see many people hop from relationship to relationship to yeah. relationship, and and people aren't okay with being single. No, yeah. no, we have this fear of um, a, a little bit of being alone. Yeah. You know, maybe even alone with our own thoughts, alone sure. with our own emotions, alone with our own, um, I don't know, inconsistencies or vulnerabilities. And there is, there's something about having someone else, and not just even in the room, but I guess really close. We do. We There's this constant desire for a closer relationship with someone. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, what, what if we were okay enough in our own skin? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So the third misconception is if you're not with somebody, you can't feel real joy. Well, if I just had this person in my life, I would dot, 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 fill in the blank. If I was just married, if I, you know, that we, we say things like this as, as a society, as a culture, we, we buy yeah. into this lie that when I get married or when I get that boyfriend, when I get that girlfriend, then I'll be truly truly happy and I just think that's wrong it, it's setting yourself up for disappointment yeah is it? it's yeah. just like uh, it, and I think when I hear that I think of I mean you're putting expectations on someone that isn't theirs to meet yeah yeah you know Absolutely. Uh, with my wife Kristen and be like well oh good I'm with her that means that she can she does this to compliment me all the time that's that's actually a very self-focused way to look at a relationship yeah the the subject of those things are me yeah. You know, you complete me or um, I'm weird or I'm incomplete or I don't experience real joy when in the a healthy relationship is is others focused. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because we'll remind everyone else of that. <laughs> it needs to be others focused. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, I think, you know, a great example here right away to kick things off in in scriptures, Genesis one. I mean, we look at the story of Adam. Um, and we see that he had a function and a purpose before he ever had a spouse. Yeah. And, and a lot of times we think of, oh, um, you know, Adam and then Eve and that came. But like he actually had a job. He had responsibilities. He was doing stuff. And in that, God's like, you know what would take this to the next level is, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, and so in Genesis uh, chapter 2, it says, Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. 
in the east, and there he placed the man he had made, Adam. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and to watch over it. Um, Adam wasn't distracted yeah. <laughs> by saying, but who's going to help me? Yeah. You know, he was, he was dialed in on the work that God had given him to do. And I think, I think a really healthy approach in relationships is we can still be dialed in to the work that God had wanted us to do. Right. You know, Absolutely. even without that other person. So, Absolutely. So the Lord created Adam and placed him in the garden to watch over it and attend to it. That was his function. That was his purpose. That's what he was supposed to do. And this function and, and, and purpose um, was assigned to Adam long before Eve ever came along. And Adam was fully, fill in the blank here, fully complete without a spouse. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that does, that seems crazy, right? And, um, and here's another fill in the blank. And it was totally normal. It was normal. Yeah. Um, and it was okay. And if you think about it, this all happened before sin ever entered the world. Right. You know? And um, I don't know. It just seems like we have a lot of self, like self-doubt. And we can we can be frustrated with ourselves. And, and putting the ex- these expectations on other people actually doesn't help it. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't subside then. And, um, but God saw fit to give him helper and... I'm glad he did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and this isn't, this isn't, um, anything against marriage or romantic relationships. I'm married. I am in love with my wife. Paul's married. He loves his wife. But, um, what we are saying is that you shouldn't find your identity in a romantic relationship. It should not be, um, it should not be the, the first priority in your life. You know, submitting to God yeah. is, is your first and foremost and then following him, not, not following the dream yeah. of, of being married. The, the picture that's painted in our head. Yeah. And yeah. if I'm being honest, my, the fights that I've had with Kristen, my wife, have come if, if I felt that she wasn't or if she felt I wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, and, and once again, those are, like those are self-focused, yeah. You know, and, um, and 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 it still happens to this day. Yeah. So the struggle um, doesn't change with another person; it can actually increase. Yeah. You know, I think uh, I I think I realized, you know, as I was was with Kristen, and then we got married, and then we had kids. Like each step of the way is like I'm realizing more and more what a, what a selfish human being I am. Yeah. Like I didn't right. realize I was that selfish. <laughs> right. Probably, was living with somebody else and then yeah. we had kids and that you know and it just seems to bring out our best but also can bring out our worst and i think god right. uses that to maybe to hone in on some things yeah so so one of those misconceptions i mentioned earlier was that um being with you can't be you can't experience real joy with, if you're not with somebody that that one really eats at me really irks me a little bit um because to claim you can't experience real joy um, without a spouse or a romantic relationship uh, is to claim that a romantic relationship is the source of joy. Mm. And I mean, if, yeah. if you d- dig down into it, I mean, that's essentially what you're saying. Um, I need somebody to experience joy or to be happy. You're saying that is the source of joy and, and that's opposed to what that's scripture true. tells us. You know? right. um, Joy is having is a fruit of, of having God, the right. Holy Spirit inside of you, and, and He He enables us to have that joy, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter who we're with or who we're not with, yeah. um, we can still feel that joy. Galatians chapter five verses twenty two through twenty three says this: But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives: love, joy, peace patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter our circumstance. It doesn't matter our lot, our lot in life. We can experience this joy outside of a relationship. Mm-hmm. We really can. Yeah. And that's super important when we're talking about identity. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, er, you know, earlier in the weeks we talked about um, being uh defined by the creation well this is true with people too yeah you know yeah. by uh the people that we're with or if we're with someone or not and, and 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 what i love about that is and what i hear you saying is just this idea of of joy can be found 
um, without having to have someone else with it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. Or, or to bring it into our lives. And, and I think, you know, as we talk about this, we're definitely focused on um, significant others, you know, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend. We're focused on um, engagements, married couples and everything. But two, I think this misconception can happen with friends at times. Yeah. Man, yeah. if I could just get in the right friend group. Right. All relationships. Yeah. yeah. All relationships or man, who am I, who am I, who I'm working for or yep. where I'm living. Right. I mean, it's just that for whatever reason, we put a lot on other people to try to help or coax our, deni- our identity along and in doing so we end up more disappointed than when we started. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's a pretty sad place to be, but, yeah. um, but man, I'm, I'm encouraged constantly pointing back to who God created us to be and even looking at all the way in the beginning and seeing Genesis as as really a good start for identity. Yeah. Well, remember, as we go into our discussion time, in order for this to work, people have got to be okay with digging in, asking hard questions, being very self-reflective and really honest, um, and really digging into even when it hurts, like we talked about last time. And so keep doing that. And before, before we do that, I'm going to pray for us. So Jesus, we're so grateful that we get a chance to dig into your word. Lord, we do thank you for the gift of others, but Lord, help us to not um, define ourselves or gain our identity from a spouse, a boyfriend or girlfriend or any other person, God, that we would be comfortable enough and confident enough in who you created us to be, no matter who else is in the room. So I just pray that over each person um, in our conversations today, would we be able to let go maybe of some of those expectations that we've placed on others and uh, and just be okay with and, and have a contentment in who you created us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.